It's been 5,000 years. Hey everybody, it's Highly and Uncle Messive. Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. In the last episode, we did ourselves a little collect-a-thon by collecting some heart pieces around in Kakarig Village and some other stuff. Yeah, stuff. In this episode, we are going to find uh, Heisenberg. <laughs> Yes, no matter what other people are going to say, well, especially in the comment section, I'm still going to call him Heisenberg. Like I say, I, don't, I, I really don't like trying to pronounce his name. It just sounds too weird, so... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and look for him, and afterwards, then we are going to start our first dungeon. In this area, this is our first encounter with Octoroks. They have appeared since the first Zelda game. I'm not quite sure if there are other Zelda games that where Octoroks did not appear. Because I think they have appeared in every game there is. I, I, don't, I don't remember if there was one where they didn't. As you already know, like, they, um... They'll just move around in directions and they'll shoot rocks. Uh, some of them will shoot rocks in all four directions. Well, actually, just, like, eight times in just... In, in each... Well, just in, in eight directions, basically. So I do believe, uh, yeah, we're now on the uh, eastern side of Hyrule, so let's go right up there. Yeah, after Ox are here, not that much of a threat. Just one sword swipe and they should be done. Just make sure you don't get hit by, the, by their, their rocks. Well, hence the reason they have, uh, they have rock in their name. Heh, <laughs> get it? Anyway, so you, uh... Oh, yes, indeed, I am... Uh... Oh, God damn it! I can't even pronounce my name either. Fine, call me Heisenberg then. Do whatever you want. This name sucks. I don't know why my parents even gave it to me in the first place. I have such... I have such bad parents. So, yes, uh, what he's gonna talk about here, uh, he, uh, wants us to, um... go to the Eastern Palace and bring him the Pendant of Courage, and for that... that is what we'll do. Before we leave this place, though, we're going to bomb this obvious-looking wall. That looks very obvious enough. And right to here, ooh, treasure chests. Must belong to him. So we're gonna go ahead and steal all his stuff. All his rupees. And all his... Well, just all his stuff here. And so after that is said and done, we'll just go ahead and... Well, just start our first dungeon. These guys right here, uh, these are the Armo Statues. Or Armos Knights, actually. Or you can just call them Armo Statues, because there's, uh, there's actually a boss in the Eastern Palace, uh, spoilers, uh, which are called, uh, well, nah, I'm not gonna go and talk about it yet until we get to the, um, until we get to the boss's lair. So yeah, once you're far away from them, uh, they uh, they just stand still like statues. If you, if you get too close, then they'll come to life and they'll try to attack you. But just a few uh, sword swipes, and you, sh they sh you should be good to go. But I think they do take away about a couple of hearts if, uh, if they hit you. So you do want to be careful with them. I also know that in the uh, 3D, install 3D installments of the, um, of the Zelda series, uh, they actually changed kind of um, attack method where you just have to throw bombs at them. Well, in Wind Waker, you have to feed them bombs, which may seem easy enough, but in games like in Ocarina of Time, then you just have to place a bomb near them and just make sure they explode by them, so. Anyways, here we are at the Easter Palace. And just by left and right here, there's actually nothing but just a bottomless pit, so <laughs> you just have to go straight here. And this uh, new enemy right here that we just now defeated are called the Popos. No, not Mr. Popo from Dragon Ball. I'm, I'm, I'm talking. They're, they're just called Popos. Uh, they're just. They're just like no. They're they're completely total pushovers. Seriously. Just one single sword swipe in, you know. They, they, and they they don't really hit much either. So they're they're just really major pushovers. So just one sword swipe and then they're done. So, just re really, like, almost to no threat at all. So, um... I don't think there's much to say about this dungeon except, well... Yeah, you know, I mean, it is the first dungeon, so it's not that much of a challenge, but... Still... I mean, not too difficult anyways, but... 
Still don't want to be careful either way. Now going to the right is completely optional, of course, so you might want to go to the right anyway because there's something that, well, will probably come in handy. And another new enemy, these are the Stolfos. Um, Stolfos, they will try to hop away from you if you try to slash at them with your sword, but just try to make sure, uh, like, what I usually do is I would just, uh, like, just corner them like that and then just keep slashing them until they're done. But they can also be pretty difficult and pretty finicky when you're trying to attack as a way they try to jump away from you. I know there are other easier methods to defeat them as well. But I just always go for the sword swipes. And these here are called the Bubbles, or the Anti-Fairies, as other fans call them. And those things I do not like at all, because not only do they take away your health, but they also take away your magic. So definitely be careful with them. If you sprinkle some magic powder on them, then uh, they will turn to fairies. And, oh, would you look at that? We got, the, we got a burrito! Another burrito! Sweet! I have no idea where these dungeons... Just they, these dungeons here love to hide their burritos, don't they? But why hide them? They must be so good. Those are good burritos, delicious burritos. I mean, they, they must have just like spent whatever money they have on some of the burritos from Taco Bell or something. They just hide them away in dungeons. Why? They're so good. They're, they're delicious burritos. You don't want to waste them. I don't leave them in treasure chests just, just for them to go bad. Such edible burritos. Uh, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> so anyway, uh, moving right along. Also, I'll give you a little bit of a moment for, uh, for you guys to listen to this, um, this rather nice music here. Yeah, one kind of sad thing about this, um, about this game, and also a bit of a, a little bit of a spoiler here. Uh, you only get to hear this thing about th for uh, three dungeons, but I'm not to go. I'm not not about to go further in detail here. So, and now we got the compass. But I really do like this dungeon theme. It's it, it's another one of my um, one of my favorite dungeon themes here. Well, not my most favorite, but just just one of them. And yes, that is uh. Here's the entire layout of the dungeon, just by opening up this burrito that we have here. And this kind of a uh, stone tether here, if you can, um, if you interact, interact with it, then Heisenberg will talk to you telepathically. Basically, he'll just uh, give you hints about uh, certain things in the dungeons. I don't know what it was, because I didn't really pay attention to the dialogue. <laughs> so, anyways, um... These guys right here, they're called the Igors. And no, they're not merely statues for what you can see here. They actually are enemies. If you get close to them, then they'll um, they'll open their eyes and they'll try to come at you. For a little bit anyways. And for some reason, then they'll just... Uh, they'll just become bored and then they'll just... They'll just close their eyes and then just come close again. And then, then they'll come to attack you again. I'm going to go ahead and use this bug net to catch this... Fairy? What? Fairy? That's, that's not how you pronounce it. Yeah, they pronounce the fairy like that for some reason. It's, it, it looks a lot like fairy or something. I, I don't know. I think it was some sort of issue back in the um, earlier days. Anyways, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, something about the, uh, the Igors. Uh, the only way to feed them, you can actually uh, slash them with your sword, but it's kind of going to take a long time for them to get defeated like that. Uh, there is a certain item or a certain weapon that you can use against them, which will only take one hit for them to kill, but we don't have it yet. Of course, pretty soon we're just about to get to that one room where it is, so that's pretty much about to change. And I do believe it is in this room. Now, it kind of took me a bit of a while f in this room for me, because I also thought that, uh... That we had to kill the... That, that I had to kill the, um... The anti-fairies in this room, but it's just, uh... These Stolfos and... 
that Igor that's right there. So just by uh, defeating all of them, then something. Well, well, actually, it won't appear right away. I mean, there's a switch somewhere. And yeah, I know. I actually tried to use my uh, magic powder on, on these guys, but that did not work at all. In order for them to actually move, they do have to defeat all the enemies. Yeah, I could have used the pots to, uh, well, through the pots of the, uh, the Igors, but I didn't for some reason. And at this point, I actually tried to avoid all the, uh, anti-fairies at all costs, or just not taking any chances, because, as you can see here, I am very low on magic. And this game does not want me to get, to get any more, uh, magic bottles. It, it won't give me any more of those magic bottles for some reason. Well, now I understand it. Games like these are never nice to me. They're just... They're never really that convenient, because when there's things I really do need, they never give them to me. It's it's always like that for me for some reason. I don't know why. It's just weird. And now we have the big key. It is the master key of the dungeon, and it can open many of the locks that small keys cannot. So what this, what this can do is that it can open up this big door that's right, right ahead, since other small keys can't do that previously. You can also open up uh, some big chests, like the one that we saw earlier. Yeah, it's another bit of uh, early installment weirdness for this game, because later games you don't, even have to, you don't even have to use something like that, because, um, because those kinds of keys, well, namely the boss keys, are just, they're only used to open up the, uh, the boss doors. And I think it's started that way since Link's Awakening. Because we get the, because their boss keys, uh, they just their only purpose was to open up the boss door. So it's it's been like that since then. And more of these stolfos. I never actually bothered to defeat them, and I had a bit of a hard time with them because their skulls keep flying all over the place, and the rest of their skeletal bodies just disappear. Like they just they they, they flew right up, they skyrocketed up, up to the ceilings for some reason. Like magic stolfos. By the way, here, uh, I didn't even, uh, show it off here, because, well, I don't even know why I didn't even, uh, I didn't even do that. Well, not that I really need to. Actually, yeah, I did. Yeah, there was something I kind of did wrong here, so. Uh, these two cauldrons, if you jump down from the ledge and fall into one of them, then you'll get to a room where there's lots of fairies. So it's actually, uh, kind of, um... It's actually kind of a nice touch for some of the dun dungeons to have. Well, of course, I already got a fairy in, in a magic bottle. Yeah, just by using the bug net, you can just catch them and then store them in your uh, bottles. I don't think I explained about the fairies or what they do. Like, one thing they do uh, heal you, but um, if you die in a, like... Basically, if you die, then they actually bring you back to life. Well, not for every single heart. They... Well, not, not for every single heart, though. Just, you know, most of the hearts that they can uh, restore for you. And yeah, there's a room where you can collect a lot of rupees, but there are also anti-fairies, so I didn't want to take any chances because uh, the fact that I'm very low on magic. And yeah, more anti-fairies here. Another thing I don't like about them is that, like, not only because of what they do to you, but also because they are just so... I mean, I'm just trying to, like, sprinkle magic powder on them, and, you know, you can always miss. They always try to dodge you. Well, it's not that they dodge you, you just miss a lot because they just... They move around so much. So yeah, those, those guys right there can get pretty finicky at times. So you have to make sure that you're just, you know... Just trying to, like, sprinkle them correctly, if you could. Oh, if, if you ever do get the chance. And I see there's a bunch of switches here. One of them is the correct one that will open that door that's over there, and it's this one. And yeah, I actually do need both uh, hearts and magic. And holy shit, that's a lot of, that's a lot of balls right here. And this room, I would say, is very ballsy. Ah! 
Okay, I, I don't know why. I just I, I, I had to go there. Alright, and as you can see here, uh, judging by this symbol that's right ahead, that kind of looks like a... Kind of looks like a ram or something of, of sorts. That means we are getting pretty close to the boss room. Now, these are uh, red variations of the Igors here. Uh, you can't actually slash them with your swords. They are completely invulnerable to that. So you can only hit them with your bow and arrow. And they also take two hits for that as well. And uh, that also reminds me, I didn't even point out that we did get the bow and arrow. <laughs> yeah, I completely missed that opportunity, but oh well, we, we, we got that. That's something at least. And yeah, I gotta say, though, they actually are pretty uh, stronger than the uh, standard sword they have. So I'm pretty much gonna be using that a lot for uh, some enemies. And now we have our first boss in the game. These are, well, Armos Knights. I mean, I've already explained about the other standard enemy, Armos Knights. There's about, like, uh, six of them that you have to kill, so... In other words, they're basically the bosses of um, of this dungeon, not just the um, not just boss in singular. So you can actually uh, either just uh, use your bow and arrow or the um, or your sword to feed them, but I'm gonna go for the bow and arrow because the bow and arrow just it, it takes like um, it takes a, like fewer hits for um, for them to get defeated. I like the um, I like the sword. One other thing that you gotta know about, though, is that, uh, it also takes aiming here, and, you know, and just make sure that your aim is precise when it comes to, um, shooting with your arrows. And after, uh, killing off the other, um, the first five armor statues, um, the last one will get all pissed off, and he will try to retaliate just by, just by crushing you, but, like that, but, eh, jokes on him. And so with that, so after getting into that heart container, we have now received the Pendant of Courage! Which looks a lot like a Christmas ornament. No, I'm not even kidding, it really does. So now that we have the uh, Pendant of Courage, uh, one down and then two more to go. And we just have to bring that to Heisenberg. Oh yeah, by the way here, like, um... Every time you do defeat a boss, uh, heart containers will always uh, drop down. There is one thing about it, though. Um, you actually do have to collect the heart container that that appears, because that is the only way that the um, that your ultimate treasure would appear. Because if you don't collect the heart container, then it will come down. So you actually do have to collect it in order for it to come down. So, in other words, if you are going for a three heart run in this game, well, too bad you. It's impossible. Because other games like Ocarina of Time, they actually uh, let you do three heart runs because you can just skip heart containers entirely. But in this case, you actually do have to collect them in order for the ultimate treasure to appear. So, anyways, uh, now that we uh, just now shot off the Pen of Courage to Heisenberg here, we have now received the Pegasus Shoes, or Pegasus Boots. Well, that, that, uh, that's what they're actually called, the uh, Pegasus Boots here. And with that, just by pressing and holding the A button, it actually lets you, uh, lets you run faster, just, you know, just dashing here. It's actually your kind of, a uh, way of, um, of moving faster through the overworld. And it, you can actually use that to, uh, to, like, run, run into enemies, since, uh, Link will be holding out a sword as he does that, and you can also just crash into walls like that. And I kind of do like the, uh, the, um, Pegasus boots here. It's too bad they don't really appear in, uh, later Zelda games. Well, particularly the 3D Zelda games. Although, there's a bunny hood that did appear in Majora's Mask, but... More of that once we, uh, get to that game. So. Anyways, uh, I think I'll just go ahead and leave it here. In the next episode, we are going to, uh... I'm not sure whether or not we're going to be doing more collectathons or if we're going to be, uh, doing the next dungeon. My intuition tells me that we're going to be doing some collectathons. So, we'll see. So, till next time, see you guys later.